in our daily brief times in God's Word, we're making our way through the Beatitudes. And today we come to the sixth Beatitude, Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, where we read this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In this famous beginning to the most famous sermon ever preached, Jesus charted the way to a blessed life. Up through Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, he's pronounced blessing upon the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, and upon the merciful. Now, in this sixth beatitude, Jesus spoke to the pure in heart, announcing to them a great blessing. He said, for they shall see God. In the ancient Greek language, the original language that the New Testament was written in, the phrase pure of heart has the idea of straightness, honesty, and clarity. There can be two ideas connected to this. One is of genuine inner moral purity as opposed to the mere image of purity or ceremonial purity. The other idea is of a single undivided heart speaking of those who are utterly sincere and not divided in their devotion and commitment to God. As he often did, the great preacher of Victorian England spoke to the heart of the idea. Charles Spurgeon observed this, quote, Christ was dealing with men's spirits, with their inner and spiritual nature. He did this more or less in all the Beatitudes, and this one strikes the very center of the target as he says not, Blessed are the pure in language or the pure in action, much less blessed are the pure in ceremonies or in clothing or in food. But he said, blessed are the pure in heart. That's the end of that quote from Charles Spurgeon. And it's true. We need to be pure in heart, not merely these outward things. Now, what is the reward for the pure in heart? Jesus announced it. He said, for they shall see God. In this, the pure of heart receive the most wonderful reward. They shall enjoy greater familiarity with God than before. The polluting sins of covetousness and oppression and lust and chosen deception have a definite blinding effect upon a person. And only the pure in heart is freer from these pollutions. It isn't so much that God changes and becomes more visible. Their reward is that they see better. Now, on this side of eternity, no human eye can see and take in the essence and the core of God's glory. Yet the pure of heart can, by the eye of faith, see and enjoy God in this life in a greater way than those who are not pure of heart. It is as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, Now we see God in his glory dimly, yet the pure of heart see him better than others do. The pure heart person can see God in nature. The pure heart person can see God in the scriptures. The pure heart person can see God in his church family. The pure heart person can see something of God's true character. There are some people who go their whole lives without seeing anything of God. They're totally unconscious to spiritual things and to divine reality. Yet not seeing something proves nothing to those who do see. Ultimately, this intimate relationship with God must become our greatest motivation for purity. Understood rightly, it is much greater than a fear of getting caught or a fear of consequences. We say, I want purity of heart because I want to see God better than ever before. That is great reward and great blessing. You can receive some of that today.